Let's jump in our time machine and go back to June of 2021 to a London newsroom. It was five days after the arrival of Prince Harry and Meghan's second child, a little girl, and a legal letter from the firm of Schilling on behalf of Meghan and Harry was making its way around publishers and broadcasters. And the reason was this. The BBC was reporting that Meghan and Harry had not asked permission from the late queen to co-opt her childhood family nickname for their little girl. And it's a scene that we need to remember. Less than a week after Meghan supposedly gave birth, after becoming a family of four, Meghan and Harry were also telling their lawyers back in the UK to push back against this claim that they said was false and defamatory and should not be repeated. And there is a good reason that we took this little trip down memory lane. Over the weekend, a furor erupted over a new book by Omid Scobie, a biographer, and I use that term loosely, who has been a big supporter of Meghan and Harry from the very beginning. In fact, they're good friends. Scabie's latest book is titled Endgame, Inside the Royal Family and the Monarchy's Fight for Survival. And over the last 48 to 72 hours or so, we have seen so many revelations coming forth that paint the firm in a very toxic light. It is here that we have to play a game of comparing and contrasting between June of 2021 and today. Between shilling stationery doing the rounds, and to get some Simon and Garfunkel in here too, the sound of silence. First, let's review some of Endgame's allegations. The firm is almost on the brink. King Charles labeled Harry a fool when Meghan and Harry's Netflix series came out last year. Catherine and Meghan have had almost no communication since late 2019. And for Catherine, there's no going back, even in her relationship with Harry. We learned that Prince William supposedly ignored Harry's messages when the late queen was dying last year, forcing Harry to charter his own plane to Scotland. William is hot-headed, and he's increasingly comfortable with the palace's dirty tricks and the courtiers who dream them up. And William is already in air mode and knows his father's reign is only transitional, and so he's acting accordingly, according to Scabies. These claims coming from Scabies are not surprising. I mean, come on. We knew this was not going to be good for most members of the royal family. But it is here that we get into the tricky part. The relationship between Scabies and Meghan and Harry over the last few years has been pretty complicated. Back in 2020, Scabies and co-author Carolyn Durand released Finding Freedom, which also made more than a few damaging claims about the firm and the Windsor family. Now at the time, Meghan and Harry released a statement. The Duke and Duchess of Hypocrisy were not interviewed, and they claimed they didn't contribute to Finding Freedom. Now, supposedly, this book is based on the author's own experiences as members of the Royal Press Corps and their own independent reporting. Okay, sure. Well, except for one little problem. In November of 2021, Meghan admitted in court to giving personal information to Scabies and Durand and having authorized some aides to brief the authors. She had to apologize to a London court for having unintentionally misled the court in a written statement. And at the time, Megan was filing suit against the Mail on Sunday's parent company, a and for invasion of privacy after they published parts of a letter that she had sent her father, Thomas Markle. Megan ended up winning, I'm sad to say. The court case saw a whole series of emails from Harry and Megan to their former royal press secretary, Jason Knopf, made public in the Court of Appeal. In one email, Harry wrote to Knopf of Scobie and Duran's book, I totally agree that we have to be able to say we didn't have anything to do with it. Equally, you giving the right context and background to them would help get some truths out there. Knopf said in his witness statement, the book was discussed directly with the Duchess multiple times in person and over email. So what about the relationship between the Duke and Duchess of Hypocrisy and Scabies these days? Interestingly enough, they're all neighbors in California. In May, Scabies gave evidence in Harry's court case against the Mirror Group newspapers, in which Harry has accused MGN of phone hacking. Apparently, Scobie had done some work at MGN back in 2002. And earlier this month, Scobie went on Twitter, now known as X, a social media site, posting of Endgame. It's not Harry and Meghan's book. I'm not Meg's pal. The Sussexes have nothing to do with it. Their story is a small part of a much bigger one. And over the weekend, we got an interview in the Times with Scobie, in which he denied being on the Sussex payroll. He said, I have mutual friends with Megan, and that definitely helps with getting information and breaking details. Okay, well, with this kind of backstory and history, 
we might expect Megan and Harry to speak up at some point about right now to try to distance themselves from Scooby-Doo's all-you-can-eat buffet of revelations about Harry's family. But instead, we haven't gotten a statement from them. There has not been a single lawyer's letter either. One of the accidental consequences of Harry and Meghan having filed 10 lawsuits in two countries recently and them having used lawyers to push back against stories like that Lilybet went back in 2021 is that at moments like this, their silence is noticeable. So far, it doesn't seem like Meghan and Harry want to quash or rebuff any of Scooby-Doo's claims. This silence from Montecito seems unlikely to go unnoticed. Only a couple of weeks ago, the story out of London was completely different. When King Charles celebrated his 75th birthday, somebody was doing some very excited briefing that His Majesty's son was going to be placing a call to his father, a call that we then learned went so well, supposedly they were planning a follow-up. Now, since then, some courtiers have said they don't believe the call ever happened, but whatever. And then we got the Times Royal Editor, Roy Anika, with a report in which a friend of Harry and Meghan said, I can't imagine the Sussexes would decline an invitation to spend time with His Majesty. As of yet, there have not been any invitations for the holidays. Hmm, okay, so just when things were starting to look up for the first time in years, we got Endgame. Even if Scooby-Doo's best source is somebody who is only nominally connected to Meghan and Harry, at this juncture, when there are the first possible signs of transatlantic bridge building, Meghan and Harry are still doing and saying absolutely nothing. It doesn't look good. If the Duke and Duchess of Hypocrisy really want to be invited to Christmas again, if they really want to make peace with the royal family, if they really want to try and rebuild a relationship with His Majesty, especially for the sake of their invisible children, Prince Archificial and Princess Invisibet, a little statement about Endgame would be a smart thing to do. Last year, Meghan gave her first post megxit print interview to The Cut, and she said, Sometimes, as they say, the silent part is still part of the song. And what about today? Well, it sure does look like, for Meghan and Harry at least, the silent part is still part of the song. And you, do you agree with this view? Please tell me your opinion below in the comment section. If you think this video is useful, please don't be afraid to like and share it with anybody else who would enjoy it too. And please subscribe to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for watching, goodbye, and I'll be back to see you tomorrow.